We're up to part five of our conversation with Tom Brislin. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. The most embarrassing thing, Daryl Sturmer of Genesis said he fell off stage. I said, everyone's falling off stage, but most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on stage. See, I, I saved the kooky questions till the end. Well, it's, you know, it's always those technical glitches that in the moment you're just humiliated and you're just like, you want to just explain it all to everyone. It's not my fault. You know, and the millennium Falcon doesn't go into hyperspace, you know, you're just like, no, this is not my fault. It's supposed to work. And, and so, um, yeah, it's Billy Joel says you do it again. So it means you meant it. You make the mistake. Right. Yeah. And, and so I think we, we rely on computers. Uh, You know, I, a lot of the sounds that I play, yeah. on my keyboards are, are driving tone banks on the computer that um, are, give me the ability to recreate like a dozen sounds at any given time with four keyboards, that kind of, that's the, that's the plus. The minus is that you're working with computers and they can be unpredictable. So there are times when you go to hit your big moment and nothing comes out. That happened. I, I filled in on keys for a couple shows with, uh, for Dennis DeYoung and the music of sticks. And sometimes the, I have a lot of work to do because he wants to just go out and, and sing lead on a song and not worry so much about the keyboard. So there's plenty to do, even with Dennis on keys. And certain sound effects like intros to Mr. Roboto or something, there, somebody tripped the power between the sound check and the show and erased the bank or something. And I went to hit the the intro and and I'm and nothing is happening and Dennis is looking back at me like, oh are you are you not doing this right or something and and I'm like pointing to my finger <laughs> playing the keys that are supposed to trigger the sound oh, and I'm like it's not happening and so he's such a pro that he he makes a joke out of it and says oh we bought that keyboard at Radio Shack anyway <laughs> so that's you know he he knew how to just keep it going and we came back to it so it th- those technical glitches really make you sweat. But sometimes it, it, there's nothing you can do except just to say, hey, look, this is technology. Sometimes there are technical difficulties and please stand by. What's the craziest thing a fan's ever done to you? Craziest. <laughs> You've been doing this a long time. There's got to be a few of those kooky. Oh, wow. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not giving you a good soundbite on this one because there's nothing coming to mind that's like so over the top that I that maybe maybe stuff happened that I buried. <laughs> Something bad, um, but I, I feel like I think one of the things is when you find people that knew you way back when, and they show up in a completely different context, like in another country. You meet a fan after the show, and they drop some knowledge about your hometown, and or something that they would never know. And I, I think yeah, so I think it's it's one of those things when, when you get like old old hometown buddies or, or friends or schoolmates or something that just hit you out of the blue. 2021 looks like the, when everyone's coming back. What are you hoping for that the, in the future? I mean, you look like you're, you're firmly into this, in this band. In good, you're a great fit. The future looks bright. If COVID can get under control. Yeah, if we return to, uh, you know... Uh, place where everything can be done safely and we're rocking on the road again. I think that it's going to be interesting because typically and historically you, you release an album, you tour it, there's the promotion cycle and everyone's talking about it. And then it goes into the sunset and maybe you get a few time, uh, time tested chestnuts from can you hear my dogs. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. They want, they want live music to return is what's happening. Um, so, with this weird situation, I feel like the absence of presence is going to have a second life because that once we finally get back on the road and we're playing some of this material live yeah. and, and, and not only that, but now the, our audience has, has lived with the album for a while. So it won't be such a, a, an unknown or like, Oh, this is the time to go to the bathroom and get a hot dog song. You know, they're going to be like, oh, I was waiting for Throwing Mountains or, or whatever it is that we play. You know, that's what we want. So uh, it could be, it, it, there's, there could be some good to come out of it in, in that regard, whereas the, the album gets a, another, another life, so to speak. And that's what I'm hoping. Ricky Mitchell, who is close to some members in the band for years now, uh, he asked, what's, 
what's your favorite weighted electric stage piano? Well, there are a lot of them. One of my favorites isn't meant for the stage. It's more meant for the home. And it's called the Casio Hybrid Grand. And people say, what, Casio, really? And they see me playing one on stage, too because they've really come a long way over the years. People think of them as the, the home toy keyboards that you get at the department store, but there's a whole other side to their, their offerings. And the hybrid grand was, was really amazing because I really felt like I could get the touch of the piano, but I do like the newer Casio Privias. I love the Nord grand. I think that's an amazing feeling keyboard and some of the Yamaha stuff it is great because, you know, again, they make the real McCoy, so it's only going to be natural that they're going to have some know-how when it comes to making a digital instrument. But it's honestly, there, there is nothing like playing an instrument that has wood and metal and natural overtones. And a while back when I was starting to do my solo album, maybe about a decade ago, I picked up the Yamaha CP70, which is... I, I, I shortcut by explaining to people it's the video killed the radio star piano or the in your eyes Peter Gabriel piano. It, it's a digital, not digital, it's an electric grand piano. It's got strings and hammers in it, but it's got pickups like a guitar. So it was meant to be portable. So it splits into two pieces that each weigh, I don't know, like 250 pounds or something like that. And this was the portable instrument. In fact, you if you look at uh, Kansas concert videos from late 70s, early 80s, I do believe they were using this as well. And even though it has kind of a typecast sound, like you hear it and you'll be like, oh, it's, that's the sound, I know that. It's, it is a piano, but it's a little more shimmery. And uh, I, I love to use it still because there's something about an instrument that creates natural overtones or something that it just promotes me making more ideas. I think I feel like I'm more creative when I'm on the natural instruments uh, and then I'll bring them into the electronic world and, and try to develop them from there. You sing a uh, lead uh, on uh, the song, the river sang good title. Um, another kick-ass song. I really love that song an awful lot. I'm going, there may be more leads in your future with this band. I would think. Uh, possibly, and and it's consistent with Kansas tradition, as you know, that we they will you listen to a Kansas album and oh, Robbie Steinhardt sings a lead on this song, or more recently, Billy Greer sings a lead on Summer, and it's it's part of the Kansas thing. I wasn't expecting to have any leads because I, I my voice is a little bit different. Uh, and yeah, but you've, you've been a lead singer. I mean, in your band. I have, you yeah. And it, but it was, I was holding all the marbles. It was my band. Yeah. yeah I wasn't stepping into some storied franchise <laughs> that, that had a, such a beloved lead singer for so many years. And, and Ronnie is really winning people over every time they see him play. And I, I encourage anyone, please come see the band when we're back out on the road. It's a really fun show. And so I would sing on the demos including the songs that zach wrote the music for like i said he he presented demos that had guitar playing the vocal melodies so then when i did write lyrics and tested to see if they worked i would sing on sing on a demo version of it and so every song that i wrote lyrics for there was a demo with me singing it but not expecting to do so on the final product um, but Phil and Richard and, and the band said, this looks like one that we'd like you to sing. And they, they heard something in the demo that they, they wanted to, to bring into the album. So I was, I was game for it. And Billy sings the harmony in it too. So we're all in there. Yeah. I, uh, I, I really like one of my favorite songs off the album, by the way. Thank you. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Buy a t-shirt, help support our channel. Links in the description of this video and all links for Kansas and Tom Brislin in the description as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Stream Music. Take care of yourself.